Hello, uh, this is Professor Karimi, and uh, I am in Jami Millia Islamia uh, teaching mechanical engineering. Uh, and in mechanical engineering, uh, I teach refrigeration air conditioning. I try to justify my teaching as as by my level of knowledge. And uh, today, I would like to discuss about the basics to start understanding air conditioning we should understand first of all about properties of the air and uh, in the property side we can start for the first topic which is represented by temperature called dry bulb temperature of the air but uh, if we talk about air then uh, there are three types of temperature which are important to learn and first if you see in the video sorry for this movement of the recorder because I don't have a professional recorder here first thing is called dry bulb temperature so there is something called bulb which is common in these two topics so if you talk about dry and wet so there are two type of situations in which the bulb the bulb of the thermometer can be kept and therefore if the bulb is dry then it will be known as dry if it will be wet bulb temperature then it will be having a wet bulb so let us first of all understand what do we mean by dry bulb temperature for that let us think about a certain system in which air is there in certain space and this air is surrounding uh, this area in which a thermometer is being kept. Now this thermometer is just an ordinary thermometer which we use for temperature measurement of our body by any doctor, not the digital one but digital one can also be used but there's a thermometer which is in usual practice having mercury or any thermometric fluid in which there these are the values which can be seen and this is this this particular thing is known as bulb of the thermometer what is the bulb of the thermometer it is a place where all the thermometric fluid is contained so if we put this thermometer in air and then if we read the temperature when it stabilizes that it goes up or then stabilizes and reaches to a point where it is not changing anymore then we say that this particular value say say this value is being achieved now what is this value it is the temperature of the air actually because this thermometer is surrounded by air if we dip it in water it will be giving you the water temperature so if this ordinary thermometer is giving you a value of temperature of air only so what is what is dry bulb temperature dry bulb temperature is a temperature of air you know it is a temperature of the air so it's not temperature of anything else but it is a temperature of air which is in this case coming as 28 degrees centigrade now the other way of understanding dry bulb temperature is that is the temperature in which the bulb of the thermometer is not wetted. It is not having any liquid surrounded. So it is just an ordinary bulb and therefore it is dry. So this temperature which is there is dry bulb temperature. Now if we want to know what is the meaning of that, then we will have to see this figure in, in context of anything else. What is that? The same air when we are talking about this, the air generally consists of 98% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen and argon and carbon dioxide along with water vapor and some other particles and all. So if you see this, the air, so if we look at air, this is consisting of two things. It is consisting of 
nitrogen, oxygen, iron, carbon dioxide and other things. These all things total can be said as just one small thing. And what is that? That is dry air. So air consists of two parts. One are the gases in the form of nitrogen, oxygen, etc. That part is known as what? Dry air. Dry air. You know, so dry air, the word dry is important here. Now let us talk about what is dry air. Dry air is something which is air in which there is no water vapor. What is this? Water vapor. So if any air is having no water vapor content with zero water vapor in the air, generally the air is consisting of gases and we don't feel like but we know there is a certain amount of water vapor also inside the air. So if we exclude water vapor in the air and we just say the remaining part that part will be known as dry air. So we can see there is a dry air part and we can see that there is a water vapor part. So there are two parts of air. There are two parts of air. One is dry air. Other part is water vapor. Okay. So the total air. The total air has got two parts. One is dry air. The other is known as content of water vapor. And we all know that water vapor is vapor in the air so when the vapor is there the vapor has been made out of water and how will the water become water vapor only by taking latent heat so if the water vapor is there in the air this means a certain amount of or the value fixed value sorry not certain amount fixed amount of water vapor latent heat is also there and if there is no there is no water vapor in the air, then it will be just dry air. Now, let us understand dry bulb temperature by a certain method. The heat content in the air, the heat content of the air that we took as a sample. We took a sample air and this sample air was this air. So this air has got two parts, number one dry air and the other part is the water vapor content in the air. We are talking about dry air. So if there is dry air only, which is not consisting of water vapor, it will be having a certain temperature. Now any temperature which is not related with any amount of latent heat. I mean, it's something which is just related with temperature only. So if we give heat to this air, if we give heat to a air which is just dry air, what will happen? Its temperature will rise because this rise of the temperature heat given to the it will be increasing its temperature. So there will be, if the temperature is 28, 28 degrees centigrade, it will rise to 29 degrees centigrade. So there will be change of temperature which will be taking place. Now if there is change of temperature, increase of temperature, we will say that it is a sensible change. What is sensible word? Sensible word is something which is related with only temperature change. So if there is increase of temperature, we will say sensible heating. If there is decrease in temperature, we will say sensible cooling. So, if we want to know what is the amount of heat in the air, it will be MCP delta T. I recall back, we are going to talk about dry bulb temperature and we are trying to understand how does this dry bulb temperature work. 
But if we have water vapor inside, then what is that? The water vapor will be the air which is having dry air and water vapor both will be having a combination of two heats, sensible heat and latent heat. The latent heat will be in the form of not the temperature of the air but in the term, form of the latent heat that the water has taken to convert into vapor and it is in the air. So the total heat of the air will be will be sensible heat and latent heat. Now I know it is there is a certain book which I have kept inside. Now if we see now to understand what is meant by dry bulb temperature we will have to go on a chart called psychometric chart. There, this chart has got vertical axis and horizontal axis. The horizontal axis is consisting of temperature. Vertical axis is consisting of about water vapor content. So what is omega? Omega on the y axis is representing the water vapor content in the air. This means it is going to talk about latent heat of the air. If we talk about temperature, if we talk about temperature, we talk about temperature, this means we are talking about sensible heat of the air. So any dry air will be having sensible heat and therefore if we choose any point on this chart, it will be having a certain value of, it will be having a certain value of temperature and it will be having a certain value of omega. You know, anything which is related with temperature is what? Is the thing that we are talking about, the dry air. So what is dry bulb temperature? Dry bulb temperature is the temperature which is an indicator. Now my, my sentence is, dry bulb temperature is the temperature of the indicator of sensible heat content of the air. Supposing if this is state condition 1. Suppose if the air is state condition 1, if this is air and it has got a state condition 1, you know, okay? So we will have to represent that state condition 1 by on this axis. And what is this? This is T and which was, we took it with the driver temperature as 28 degrees centigrade. This 28 degrees centigrade on the axis, which is representing a state condition 1, is the dry bulb temperature of the air representing the sensible heat content of the air. So what is dry bulb temperature? I repeat, dry bulb temperature is the temperature of air without thinking about what is the water vapor content in the air. It is taken with the help of ordinary thermometer where the bulb of the thermometer is kept not wet just the thermometer that we keep in the air and let it stabilize and when it is stabilizes we take that value and that value is going to represent the state condition of the air here in this case is state condition 1 28 degrees centigrade which represents the sensible heat content of the air so dry bulb temperature is a representation of sensible heat content of the air. Any change in dry bulb temperature will be change in amount of sensible heat content of the air. That is what is a typical meaning of dry bulb temperature. Dry bulb temperature does not indicate anything with the amount of humidity, amount of latent heat but is just talking about the air which is dry in nature, which is generally not there, but it represents the amount of content of sensible heat that the air carries with itself. I hope I tried to clarify the difference between other temperatures and dry bulb temperature will be visible in coming concepts of wet bulb temperature and dew by point temperature. So here the dry bulb temperature is being made repetitively clear to you. Thank you very much.